Now you might have noticed that when I'm initializing the blog posts array in my blog list component, I'm not doing this in the constructor. I'm doing this in this method called ng on init. Why am I doing this? Before we talk about that, let's talk about what ng on init is. ng on init is a lifecycle method. Every Angular component has a lifecycle. It gets started at a certain point when it's used and it's accessed, and it gets destroyed at a certain point when it's no longer used. Maybe the view gets moved away, or the user navigates to another view, or whatever the reason may be. That component at that certain point gets destroyed. So there are different steps along that life cycle from creation to destruction. And these life cycle events are marked by certain hooks. Now, let's say you want to execute a certain piece of logic in your component when that component gets created, or you want to execute a certain piece of logic in your component when that component gets destroyed. You can actually add those hooks in your component to tell Angular to call them when certain life cycle events happen. So for instance, when the component gets initialized, you want to execute certain piece of logic. Well, you can put that inside a method called ng on init, and then Angular is going to call this method when the component is being initialized. Similarly, you can put in a method here that Angular is going to call when that component gets destroyed, right? So Angular, by default, when certain lifecycle events are reached, it looks for certain methods on your component. If those methods exist, it is going to call them. So here I'm making sure that these two lines of code are executed when the component is initialized, and which is why when the component loads, these two, met these two uh, elements are populated into the blog post array, and which is what you see over here. The Angular page on lifecycle hooks gives more information about what those different lifecycle elements are. Uh, so here is the lifecycle sequence that are available for you. So what we are using is the ng on init. It is called when the component or the directive is first initialized, right? It's called once after the first ng on changes. So there's an ng on changes hook that happens before. I don't have the ng on changes method here, but if I'd implemented that, that would have been executed before the ng on init. So this is something that I would definitely recommend you take a look at, angular.io slash guide slash lifecycle dash hooks. Uh, the thing that I want to highlight here is the, uh, first of all, the ng on destroy. This is where you can do cleanup. Let's say you're subscribing to a bunch of observables. When the component gets destroyed, you can unsubscribe from those observables in the ng on destroy. That's a good and recommended practice. Uh, the one thing that I want to highlight is this interface that you see over here. The blog list component implements this interface called on init. On init is an interface which has one method, which is the ng on init. If you implement this interface, you need to implement this method of the interface. You don't necessarily have to implement the interface though. Angular is not looking at if your component implements the interface. Angular is just looking to see if your component has this method. If you have the method, Angular is gonna call it at that particular lifecycle event. Implementing the interface is handy because if you implement an interface and you don't put this thing in here, you're gonna get a type, TypeScript error because TypeScript says, hey, this doesn't implement the interface properly. It doesn't have the method that it needs. So that's the reason why you implement these interfaces. And each of these lifecycle hooks has a particular interface that you can implement, and then you can implement those methods. It makes sense that this interface is not something that Angular looks at because this is a TypeScript interface and then once TypeScript gets compiled down to JavaScript, these interfaces anyway disappear away. They are strictly a TypeScript construct. And as you can see here, the Angular documentation also says that the interfaces are optional, but then it's good practice to do that. So that's why we're doing it. So this answers the first question about what ng on it is. Now the second question is, why have I put this initialization an ng on in it instead of putting this in the constructor. Can I not put these two lines of code in the constructor? The short answer is you can. And if I were to see the effect, it's pretty much the same thing because the constructor also gets initialized when the class is being initialized, right? That's the first method that gets called. So you're populating values 
to this class instance, everything is going to work great. The best practice, however, is to put this in ng on init and leave the constructor pretty lightweight. Ideally, you want the constructor to just do dependency injection, inject services, inject your other providers, but uh, all this kind of initialization needs to happen in ng on init, and that's best practice. Why? Because when you're using this component for testing, you ideally want to initialize that component. You want to create a new instance of the component and then run tests on it. The more complicated your constructor is, the more difficult it is going to be for your test classes to initialize this component. Now, you typically don't hard code these values. Typically, you would make a call to a service and get the value from maybe a REST API call or whatever, and that's what's going to get populated over here. Now, imagine you are making that REST API call in the constructor and populating the blog posts right here in the constructor. In that case, your test code would have to do a whole lot of mocking, would have to do all that setup just to initialize a new instance of the blog list component. That's going to be a bit painful. However, by putting it in the ng on init method, I can create a new instance of the blog list component without having to do all that initialization. In the case of an actual runtime instance, it doesn't make a difference. Angular is going to call this anyway, but it makes a difference during testing in that you don't have to mock all this stuff in order to initialize the constructor. 